Hello friends, welcome to Leg Life. In today's vlog, we are actually gonna answer a question that was recently asked to us on Facebook. So if you watch our channel, you know that we recently did a Q&A vlog, and some of the questions we were asked, we felt like fit better in their own vlogs. They were just uh, probably too good of questions to answer just really quick. This is one of those questions. So Brent on Facebook asked, what are your top three Disney World tips for those going to Disney World? So the reason we thought this would be a great standalone video is that um, a lot of people are searching for Disney World content. Maybe you have a Disney World trip coming up, maybe it's your first time to Disney World, and this is a question that a lot of people ask. Mm -hmm. In fact, lots of our friends who are going to Disney World call us and say, hey, can you help us? <laughs> what are some tips? What are some tips? What do we do? <laughs> we don't have any idea, it seems overwhelming. So in today's vlog, we are gonna tell you the top three tips that we think every person should know and consider when planning a Disney World vacation. Our number one tip is to be realistic. Disney World is huge. Yeah. Four parks, two water parks, and Disney Springs, which like could be its own half day in itself. Um, and a lot of people don't give themselves enough time when planning a Disney World trip. So the parks are huge and just be realistic about how big they are and what you want to do in all of them. And you're not gonna be able to fit all four parks into a day or two, it's, just, it's not gonna happen. You're not gonna be able to see anything in any of them if you try to like cram it all in. And remember how spread out the parks are. If you've been to Disneyland, you go from like Disneyland, Magic Kingdom, just right across the little walkway and you're in California Adventure. Right. Not the case Not at Disney case. World. Like you're taking monorails or buses or you're driving your car. Uh, so we're talking about a huge area. Yeah. So honestly, we would say at least one day for Magic Kingdom at least one day for Epcot. Open to close. Open to close. And it, it used to be that Animal Kingdom and Hollywood Studios were considered half day parks. So you could do those two parks in one day. Because Animal Kingdom actually used to close at, f at like 5 p.m. Um, now, with Pandora opening and they have like the Rivers of Light show at night, they're actually open until nine or 10. Yeah, Animal Kingdom used to offer nothing in the evenings. Right. And so what you do is you'd start out your day, your morning and early afternoon at Animal Kingdom, go to Hollywood Studios for like evening and their nighttime show, and then that's one day. Right. But now with Hollywood Studios, or now with Animal Kingdom, you have to decide if you're gonna be there all day. And also don't forget Disney Springs. You know, Disney Springs uh, used to be called Downtown Disney, really is like several hours just in itself. Amazing food, amazing entertainment, just mm -hmm. a fun place to walk around. World of Disney is there, great huge, shopping. yeah, great shopping. <laughs> and so as you're planning parks, also I would say building time at Disney Springs. Mm -hmm. So Disney is expensive, right? There's no way to get around that, especially Disney World where you're talking so many days. Yeah. And so one of the ways that we save money, so you can actually spend more time in the parks uh, leads us to tip number two, which is don't feel like you have to stay at a Disney hotel on site. Disney hotels are amazing and no doubt it's, it's gonna be like an amazing experience, but it's not your only option. So we always try to stay off site because what we found is that if we stay off site, we actually end up saving enough money to give us an extra day or two in the parks. And honestly, like for us, we would rather have a couple extra days in the parks than spending that same money to stay in a Disney hotel at night yeah. when honestly we're just back there to sleep. And also remember, as we talked about earlier, that the parks are so spread apart that it's not like when you stay on site, you just walk out your room door and like walk into the park. Like at Disneyland. Yeah, like at, like at the Grand Californian, like you walk right into California Adventure. You can't do that at Disney World. Nope, you're at least taking a monorail <laughs> or a boat to parks. Right. Um, so we actually think that staying off site is a great way to save money on what will certainly be a very expensive vacation. Mm -hmm. On one of our recent Disney World trips, we stayed at a Sheraton hotel. It was like a four star resort, amazing outdoor water park area, super, super nice hotel. Mm -hmm. uh, we got the room on Priceline for $79 a night. It was just outside of the Disney property. <laughs> um, the Disney hotels, like even the Disney value hotels. The cheaper ones. The cheaper ones were probably $200 more a night. And so uh, again, if you want the full Disney experience and money really is no no issue for you, then of course, stay at a Disney property. But if you want more days at the park and you're looking to save money, don't feel like you have to stay on site. Now, our number three tip is get really, really good at the Fast Pass system. Yeah, so if you're familiar with Fast Passes at Disneyland, it's like the little paper tickets. That's annoying. 
Disney World is amazing. Yeah. Uh, you can order magic bands, which are these like bracelets that you wear. Uh, if you're staying at a Disney park, you get them for uh, at one of the Disney resorts, you get them for free. Like the resort will give them to you. But even if you're not staying at a Disney resort, you can order them for like $15, I think, on the Disney yeah, website. And what you do is you link it with your My Disney account and all of your information will be on there. You get your fast passes right on there and you can book them in advance. It gets you into the park, so you just like scan yep. your wrist against this thing and it gives you the fast passes and i mean it's just like all of it is just right there and you just scan your arm and it's amazing and one of the things like at disneyland is that to get fast passes like you get in the park and you instantly start running to these fast pass places <laughs> right it's like okay we gotta get this fast pass and this fast pass the, um with the fast pass plus at disney world you can book them in advance so like you know in advance the things that you're already set up yep. for and i think that you get like Three per I think you get three per like person at a time or right. something like that. Um, but fast passes, because again, Disney World is crowded, lots of people. <laughs> and you don't want to spend your whole day when you spend all this money, you don't want to spend your whole day waiting in line. And so like some of the popular rides can be an hour plus wait. Yeah. But Fast Pass Plus helps you spend less time waiting in line. Yep. So for more me, time enjoying the park. And that's what you like, you're not spending money to wait in line. Right. You're spending money to like do as much as you can. Fast Pass Plus, I think, is the best way to do as much as you can. Yes. So the fast passes are really all about planning ahead and making sure that you book those before you go. And on that note, book reservations at the restaurants. Yeah, the advanced dining reservations are absolute necessity mm -hmm. if there's a certain restaurant you want to go to um because the reality is if you don't book dining reservations at any of the sit down places there, to yeah there's either gonna be a really long wait or you're not gonna be able to get in like be our guest restaurant you're not walking up and getting reservations <laughs> i'm sorry um and so so a lot of people though that's okay like they want to have a hot dog or uh, they want to have like you know, like chicken strips or something like that. There's lots of those kind of fast service places mm -hmm. you can just duck into and we certainly do that. Mm -hmm. But if any of the sit down table service restaurants are on your list, you have got to make those reservations in advance. Far, far in advance. Yeah. <laughs> so those are our three tips for anybody who's going to Disney World, whether you're going for the first time or whether you're going back. Tip number one, be realistic. Understand the size of the parks and really how long it's going to take you to go through them. Um, number two, don't feel like you have to stay on site. There are a ton of hotel options close to the park yep. that honestly can be really nice and save you a lot of money. Because you really are just sleeping there. Yeah, basically, that's exactly right. Number three has to do with fast pass and planning ahead. Get really good at the fast pass plus bands. They are absolutely worth it. Mm -hmm. They make the fast pass system so simple. I wish Disneyland would get those yes. so bad. Uh, and then also with planning ahead, make your advanced dining reservations as early as you possibly can. Uh, we got to eat at Be Our Guest restaurant and it was amazing. It was so great. If we hadn't planned ahead, never would have happened. Mm -hmm. So thank you guys so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not, and leave us a comment below. Let us know what are your favorite tips when it comes to visiting Disney World in Orlando. We cannot wait to go back. Even just talking about yeah. like what our favorite things are, what our favorite tips are, kind of has us anxious for our next trip. Thank you guys. We appreciate you and we will see you on the next Leg Life Vlog. Yeah.